So guys, welcome to Laravel 5.7 and um, the first thing we need to do to start developing in Laravel 5.7 is that we need to download it, alright? There is a way to download it that I will show you. So first of all, go to laravel.com slash docs slash 5.7 or just click laravel.com and uh, click on documentations and then uh, make sure it's set to 5.7. Now, at the time I'm making this video, 5.7 is like the highest, the latest version of Laravel. But um, this video will work perfectly for 5.8, 5.9 uh, versions of Laravel, alright? Okay, even if you're doing uh, any Laravel 6, most of the things I teach in this video will work perfectly for you, alright? So now we're in the documentation, we need to scroll down to see how to install Laravel. First of all, it's telling us the uh, things we need to have. To be able to run laravel we need to have php 7.13 minimum installed and then we need to have all these things um, set up in our php all right now to uh, install php we just need to install a full package that has php in, in uh, involved in it now if at this point you don't know what is wamp server or lamp server or zam server uh, you need to quit this video because uh, this video will be too high for you so before you learn Laravel, you should have known some at least some basic PHP, installed PHP and all. So I have one server. Um, just for uh, just to be sure, because uh, this is a basic tutorial. If you want to install one server, you have to go to wamserver.com and um, install one server. Download it and install. That's the latest one server. So in case your one server doesn't have up to PHP five seven point one three. Uh, one thing you can do is to install fresh WAMP server. Remember that sometimes when you open WAMP server, it is not showing you uh, English. So this is um, some language I'm not sure of, but um, okay, it sounds it seems like French. But if you click on this, it will show you English. It will start showing you English. You see, my page is already asking me to download, all right? But uh, to translate, but don't use the translate option. Just use the English version so that when you download your WAMP server, it will be in English. Now you have to download based on your system. I'm using 64-bit Windows 10. That's uh, my computer. So use it too um, if you're using Windows 10. Now if you're using, if you're using Mac uh, uh, or any other operating system like um, Linux, you need to Google down uh, what do you call it, WAM server for Linux or WAM server for uh, Mac. For Mac, it's called MAM server A M A M P MAM because um, M the first M there starts for Mac. And then same thing with um, Linux, it's, it's called LAMP server for Linux. Alright, like I said, I expect you to already know these things if you're learning PHP. Now let's look at my own WAMP server just to be sure. I just want to be sure that you know how to set up this. You click on your WAMP server, make sure it's running. Now to run your WAMP server, you need to start it. It's an app, so I'll type WAMP. See mine is WAMP64, I'll click on it. Then uh, it usually gives you this uh, funny warning. And then you say yes. And then you wait for mm, between a few seconds to two minutes, depending on uh, the kind of system you have. Basically, you're looking at this icon here, uh, this WAMP icon. You're waiting for it to turn green. All right, all these things will pop up while it's booting. So when it finishes booting, it will turn gradually to turn from red to yellow, then to green. When it turns green, then we're good to go. But if it is stuck in yellow after like two or three minutes, then it means your WAMP server installation has issues. Now, if your WAMP server installation is running and um, you, when, whenever you start it, it shows you a pop-up, read the instruction in that pop-up. It's usually that a, a, a .dll file is missing. Now, you need to go to Google and take the name of that file and type download the name of that file .dll. You'll see it in Google. It's usually a small text file. You download it. Then you Google how to install DLL files in Windows. You will see how to where to copy and paste in your system. Then you run your WAMP server again. Usually, in some systems, there are usually like four to five DLLs that are missing. You just download all those things, put in your system, and your WAMP server will work perfectly. All right, now see my WAMP server is now green, so which means I'm good to go. Everything is running. See, all services are running. Now we have to install uh, um, Laravel. The easiest way to install Laravel is to uh, use Composer. That's not just the easiest; it's the most professional way to do that. So click on this and it will take you to Composer web page. Alright, so you go to com Composer uh, website and just um, read the instruction on how to install WAMP server for, uh, install Composer for your own system. So Composer helps you, is a dependency installer for PHP. 
in case you're coming from JavaScript, the equivalent length of Composer is NPM. All right, NPM install Node Package Manager. So you click on Downloads. Now it's going to give us instructions on dep depending on the kind of system you're using. I'm using Windows, so I would just click on this and install. Now I already have it, so I don't need to actually click on this. All right. So uh, if you just click on this, it's going to download it. Then after downloading, you install it. Now I want to let you know that if you finish installing Composer, you are not going to see anything. You understand? You don't need to run Composer anything. Once you've installed it, that's all you need to do. There's nothing like starting Composer at all. Now uh, there are other ways you can install it depending on the system you're using, whether you're using uh, Mac or anything. If you just keep scrolling, you see other ways to install it. All right. Cool. Now we've installed Composer. We can get back to uh, WAMP uh, to Laravel documentation. So this is the first way to install it. I don't normally use this way. It's not interesting. The best way to install it, and of course, this is how you're going to do stuff in other operating systems like Mac. But we're using Windows, and Windows is super, super easy. So in Windows, this is one, one easy way to install it. So um, the installation is super duper easy in Windows, as you can see. You just need to copy this and run it in your command prompt. Now you can use any command prompt of your choice. It is okay. For me, I like to use git bash, the git command prompt. So let's go show you how to download it. That's the best one I've used so far. So you can always find any one. There's the one that comes with your system automatically. For instance, if I type CMD here, it's going to show me a command prompt that comes with my system. You see? Then there's node command prompt. All right. So if I do this, it's going to show me. This command prompt comes with, comes with every system. So, but I prefer node command. Uh, I, I prefer uh, git. So I'll type git uh, bash. Hit enter. Or download git bash anyone hit enter it's going to take you right to a special kind of command prompt that is being run by git you see this is what i'm looking for you see git dash scm.com slash downloads that's what we're looking for we'll click on it it takes us to git scm now that's where we need to be uh and that's where we're going to download two things you see you can download for mac for Windows, for Linux, since we're using Windows, we're going to hit this download. You see, this is the latest one for Windows. So this will automatically change to the system you're using. If you click on it, it's going to download. Now, um, by this time, my Composer download has completed, and it is less than 1 MB. It's like 750 kilobytes. So I'll click download, and we're good. I already have it in my system, though. All right. Um, I already have it in my system, so I don't need, really need it. So now we've had all those things installed. Now we're going to have to copy this. Copy, go to Laravel page, copy this line. Now we're going to go to where we want to have the Laravel installed. That's where we're going to run, open the command prompt for this. So usually it's on, um, in fact, the only place, not just the best place, the only place you can do that is in, go to your WAMP server. Go to your www directory. That's the only place you can do that. Then from your www directory, you can open, um, you can start a command prompt from there. All right. So, and which is exactly what we're going to do now. So this is a www directory that's open. So I'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard. All right. It's the shift key. So press and hold it. Then right click on an empty space. Then release the shift key. It's going to show you this right click options, but it will show you PowerShell or Git Bash. All right. So you can use any of these to do what I want. I'll use Git Bash. I'll click on Git Bash. And um, it will pull up Git Bash. Okay, cool. So my Git Bash is running. Now I have to just drag it to this place. And I'll make the, the fonts big. Uh, hold my control key. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. So just to make it big enough, then we paste what we had from Laravel. I'll right click and click paste. Oops, we have to go copy it. Copy. Copy. Right click, paste. Okay, here we have it. Now, um, all these things are really uh, normal, but the last uh, word is what you have to take note of. This is what Laravel will name the folder. If I, make sure you have your internet connected. Because with your internet, this this line, once we run it now, to go to the internet and try to download Laravel into this folder. 
So we don't want to call it this folder. What we want to call the folder is um, since we are building a cost management platform, I'll call it I'll call it Lara Cost. Lara Cost. All right. So with Lara Cost, we hit enter. Make sure you have good internet. This this particular part is going to take um, let's say between uh, sometimes one minute to five minutes depending on how fast your internet is if you're in some country where your internet is super duper fast this could happen in seconds but if you are somewhere like where I am where the internet speed is just average this could take as much as two minutes to five minutes so just chill and uh, wait wait it out wait for it to finish the downloads all right so I'm going to pause this video until the down downloads are finished then I'll come back and we will continue. So right now the installation is done. Let me just show you how long it is. Now if your internet breaks along the way you're going to see errors like this. So make sure that if there's an error that have happens during this installation it's like I'm 99% sure that it is because your internet broke. So make sure you maintain a steady internet. Now we're done here. The next thing we have to do is to enter into the folder the laravel folder remember if you look at this you see that is in warm 64 and this folder is warm 64 slash wwc when ww now we're trying to get to um lara calls we're trying to penetrate this folder so we're, what we're going to do is the cd lara calls hit enter and um we are in lara calls you see the the path has changed now we're going to do composer install inside this so that um, composer install just basically says look at all the packages that is listed see all these packages from here now all these packages are listed so we want to use composer install to install them all right composer install um, I believe that normally because we installed Laravel with composer this should um, have already installed all those um, uh, what do you call it packages but in case you didn't use this method some people use other methods to install composer then you do composer install but uh, if you install laravel using composer by default all those things should have uh, been installed so now what we're going to do is to try and start the laravel app and run it so the way to run laravel app is php um, artisan serve hit enter so to try and spin up to create a special laravel server and give us the URL. We now have to take that URL and go straight to our application, uh, go straight to our, our browser application and try to visit that URL. All right. So right now we're done. As you can see, it has started the Lar uh, Laravel server and it has given us the URL. So what you're going to do is just copy this. Um, right click, copy. If you're not using git uh, bash command prompt you will not be able to right click in most command prompt you don't have the ability to right click you just have to memorize this and type in your browser so i'm going to paste this here uh, you know this is 127.0.0.1 that is the same thing as home so you can also type localhost in place of this if i type localhost it will still work so hit enter and it will try and bring up your laravel server and mine is trying to open it right now it's still opening as you can see it's rotating so it's going to show us our Laravel website for the first time ever. And that um, completes our first stage in uh, Laravel app development. The very first stage is completed if we can see our Laravel server. Now, if your server rotates endlessly, um, you might need to do either of two things. End this server by pressing Ctrl C and go back to your browser. Okay, then restart it by using PHP Artisan Serve. Go back to your browser. And uh, try to visit it again. This is a common problem you will face so many times during the, your development uh, period. All right. So anytime that this thing is rotating endlessly. So let me try it now. So what I'll do is just uh, paste and go, and know whether to open. If it doesn't open, I'm gonna stop this the server. So I'm going to try and restart the server. The way to do that is to press Control plus C on your keyboard or Command C. So now I've pressed it, as you can see, the server has stopped and look at the browser, it has said this site can be displayed. Now I'll have to run my uh, previous command, PHP Artisan Server, which is restarting the server. Now the shortcut to run your previous command in command prompt is to press your up arrow key on your keyboard. So I'll press the up arrow key, that's it, press enter, and we are right there, see? The server is right started back, 
now I can refresh and of course like I said another thing we can try is to make sure that we are visiting instead of 127.7 .7, we can do localhost it has already started um, so this is it as you can see this is Laravel basic page this shows that your site is working perfectly and everything is going on fine that's basically what it uh, what this shows now let's go inside and start looking at what Laravel has to offer from the inside so uh, if we go to our one our ww folder we'll open lara course see everything that was installed everything now um we have to open it with a code editor something called a code editor if you are watching this you should have already have your own favorite code editor but i use um vs code uh not because it's the best in the world but it's somewhere up there and i just started using it and it just made sense to me i just stuck with it so if you in vs code uh, it's Visual Studio Code, which is owned by, I think it's owned by Microsoft, so um, it works perfectly with Windows system. Now, if I click on an empty space, I will see Open with VS Code. It's just that easy, so I'll click Open with VS Code. Now, if you don't have VS Code, what you can do is to go to your browser and type Download VS Code. VS Code. If you have Download VS Code, hit Enter. You will download the one for your version, alright? You see it's that easy visual studio code so it can be used for many languages html css javascript whatever so as is starting up uh if we just give it a few more seconds it will boot up properly so it's available on, on mac too depending on the system you're using so this is the download page you just find the one for your system all right i uh, use windows 7 uh, we use windows 10 so you click on this and you'll download uh, it's a very nice editor so if you already have the one you're using, such as um, Sublime Text and so on, it's it's perfectly fine. Just use what you uh, what works for you. All right. So our VS Code has started. Now, uh, but the other thing is, um, there's an other another VS Code from a previous code I was writing. So look at it here. So these are VS Code, very beautiful. Now what we have to note is that on the left side of your screen is the list of the folders. You see, look at this folder. I start with App Bootstrap Config. And uh, if we look at our folder here, you see that it's app bootstrap config. So if you compare it side by side, you see that they are the same. So we open this folder using VS Code. Now we can access the codes inside. All right. So a quick run through of what's happening here. So we have Laravel. So this is the most of the code you'll be writing will be here. Here we have your controllers and your middleware and whatever. We'll get to that shortly. And then. Uh, here you have your connections to the database but um, the most important file here is in resources in resources views you will see this is where you write most of your HTML code here in this um, resources views folder we'll get to that and you will get to understand everything perfectly it's so simple but before then um, we need to configure a Laravel so that it will be able to connect to the database all right so we hit click on end so usually if you're writing raw php you have to write um code that will connect to database where you have to say um uh, is it connection mysqli connection pdo whatever whatever although since you don't do it in laravel you just have to enter the parameters in this folder in this dot env folder file sorry once you enter the parameters you are good to go now, if you don't have a .env file, Laravel ships with .env.example. All you have to do is right-click and rename this .env.example to remove the .example extension so it ends up as .env. All right, so you right-click on it and click on rename. All right, so here we are. Um, Laravel has already created a key for us. If it didn't create the key, it will tell you in your command prompt. I didn't create the key so you now have to run php artisan key generate but it created the key for me automatically i need to let you know that it doesn't create it in all installations so if you ever get an error here that there is a key missing or something you have to run php artisan key colon generate mm, i'll try and see if i can write it so this is what you have to run php artisan key generate you run that uh, once you run that it's going to generate this page 64 key 
it should be unique for every Laravel app. Okay, cool. And then as we go, notice that there is a database connection here. By default, it uses home state, but I'll change it to my database name. Now I have not created a database yet, but I'll just um, enter this now, then go to the database and create it. So what I'll enter here is, um, let's call our database name Laracos. Like I said, we've not created it yet. Then the username, and once you install your WAMP server, if you didn't tamper with anything username, you understand, if what I'm saying now is strange to you, don't ever touch it. So user, your username should be root by default. All right. Then your password should be empty. Okay. So now we have to go to our Laravel app, at our database, and try to save the world. So go to database, a WAMP server. Now we're going to go to PHP my admin. So it will try and pull up using a uh, server. Now, if uh, it doesn't show up, just make sure you visit localhost slash php my admin. That's what you will visit, and it will open php my admin. From then on, you can go ahead and create your own, uh, a create a database for your Laravel app. So, so there we are. Now, what we're gonna do is um, it opens this. Now we need to log in. So make sure that you have root here and you have empty here, unless you've changed it which some people do but if you've never tampered with this then the login details should be root and empty okay so i'll have to delete this password delete the password so that is root and empty hit enter remember i set it to my sql you can use mariadb if you click on this drop down you'll see other types of databases you can use i just prefer to use my sql all right all of them are mm, roughly the same thing. So click login. It's going to log you in. Then when we log in, we have to create a database. All right. So um, we're logged in. Now you click on databases. If you've done this before, you should know the easy way to do that. So when databases opens, type here. We remember that we named our database Lara Course. From here we called it Lara Course. I'll just copy Lara Course. Sometimes in programming, it's best to copy than to retype because you might make mistake while we're tapping so i'll right click and paste lara course hit um, create now that's all we need to do it has created a, a laravel table as a, a database as you can see there are no tables inside all right so um let me quickly explain to you the whole thing about um, um mvc if in case you've been coding Laravel before, you may not need this explanation. But if this is your first time of learning Laravel, then you need to understand what MVC is. And if you understand it, you have understood the root of Laravel. You understand? So I'll explain what MVC is, and um, that will help you really deeply understand how Laravel works. You understand? So it will get it to help you understand it from first principle. Alright, so I've created this first image, this image to explain the whole MVC process to you. This is what MVC looks like uh, in any um, framework that you're using for MVC. Let's say uh, you can be using uh, Kick PHP, Code Igniter, Laravel. They're all the same. So I'm just going to explain it once and for all so you understand it. If you can understand this, you've understood Laravel. All right, so we're going to start with the database. Uh, you and I are very much created a Laravel. We created a database in PHP my admin, and uh, remember we named it um, we named it Lara course. So that's our database. And you know, usually your database will contain uh, tables, a lot of tables and fields. All right. Now this is where Laravel starts. From here is where Laravel starts. Okay, this database is outside of Laravel. Now we have the model. The model um, defines the relationship between each table. So in your database, you can have users table. Then you also have uh, what other table now? Comments table. All right. A user can have many comments, but a comment can only belong to one user. You see, that's the relationship. So in Laravel, you're going to define that relationship inside your model folder. So let's go check out what model folder is. So inside app, you go to inside app so your models are dumped in laravel it's just dumped directly here look at this user.php is the default um, model file that comes for your user uh, 
for your users, you understand? So this is your user file, this is the default model file that comes with it. You, you understand? So this is where you establish uh, the connections between each tables. And as you can see, another thing that happens in the model, it says which, uh, for security reasons, it's saying which fields are fillable. If you don't put any field here, somebody cannot update it from a form. You understand? And which uh, fields are hidden, see? And so on. All right, so but you can also create a, a separate folder and handle your users, uh, your models right there, which is what I like to do. There are four folders here you have console exceptions, HTTP providers, and then you need another folder that you can call models. It's up to you th to do or uh, to handle it the way you want. I usually like to create a separate folder where I have my models instead of dumping them all there. But that's what models is you're just going to establish. A basic some prerequisites or parameters for the fold the, for the user uh, table now what you have to notice about models is that uh, the naming convention as you can see here here is capital U capital U and um, the name is in singular even though in our database it's going to be all small letters and they will be plural so this table in our database will be users that's the name of the table users but if we come to our Laravel folder it's gonna be user in, in the model folder all right every time we're going to be making reference to it it's going to be user and it will all it will always start with capital letter now the next thing we look at is the controller the controller is where you write the bulk of your code all right that's where you write a lot of your code so uh, the controllers can be found in HTTP controllers you see so the um, this is just basic controller these controllers come by default with Laravel so let's say Let's see what is inside the login controller. So if I click on login controller, you see this is what it talks about. So it's just telling it where to redirect to. And you keep creating functions here. Uh, login function, logout function, um, uh, different functions you want to uh, do in your app. So I'm going to say that when coding Laravel, this is where you're going to spend 60 to 80% of your time building. All right. So this is where you create all the functions and as you can see for uh, each major fun thing you need to do you have in a different folder for it look at this one this is for registration it has this function the construct of course it has the validator function so that when you're filling a registration form um, it will be able to handle it validate the form it has um, the function that will create the user if you want to sign up and so on you see reset password so this is what the controllers are we'll be working on these controllers we'll be creating our own uh, custom controllers for different things so let's say we have um, a comments table in our database we will need a comments controller so for each table in your database chances are you will need an equivalent controller one file that is your controller for that table and you will also need one file that is your controller for the model that is your that is your model so you need a model file and a controller file for each table in your database all right unless you go advanced where you don't need them but uh, basically at this level just know that any table in your database for you to be able to, for you to be able to work in your laravel app you need to have controller and um, and the models for it all right now the next thing here is um, you see the controllers usually talk to the models so in a typical controller what we have here is not really a typical controller this is just some controller that came with laravel all right so they are doing some pretty advanced stuff there let me see let's open a controller here login controller I forgot password controller so they are doing pretty advanced stuff here so you will not see that it is linked to um, a model so but for the most part let's say 80 90 percent of the time we are working on a controller we have to tell Laravel the model that it is connected to that's why I put this arrow here every controller has to uh, connect to a model all right so when you're working with a controller i hope you can see the screen very well so when you're working with a controller you need to at the top link that controller to the model so our users controller will be working with user model all right so we have to write a, just one line of code that will tell this controller this is the model you are tied to so our comments controller will be working with uh comment model comment in singular now so comments plural Comment controller will be working with comment model. All right. So now um, 
we need to always link it then what if comment controller is also having a relationship with user model because uh, a user will make a comment we can also link it so sometimes in one controller you will see that you have you have one controller linked to several different models it happens and you will see as we build need will arise where we need to link controllers to models all right or multiple models now there's the route so before I explain this route, I want to start from here in the view. This is what your users see, uh, your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript. This is where they all are. So let me show you this folder. So this is in resources. So if, I, if we just, um, this is our basic folder. So if we go to resources, we are going to see that there is JS. This is where you put all your JS file. For instance, if you're using Vue.js and all, this is where you put your JS file and all, JavaScript file, those screen slides and all. Uh, of course, you can also put it in public, depending on how you're building your stuff, all right? Then you have view. This is where you put your HTML. So even though it is called .php, if you open it, you'll see a bunch of HTML there. Okay, you see? This is HTML. There is not it. You see? But it's called .php so that some PHP code can work into it. Laravel have this kind of unique PHP. I'm going to call it a funny PHP. It's called Blade. It's a templating engine. It's a way that you can write PHP shorter with shorthand. So consider it a shorthand for PHP. For instance, see here, they're trying to write an if statement. You see, if route colon has, see what they put behind the if. Instead of you opening and closing PHP tags, you understand, usually you're supposed to open PHP tag here and close it somewhere here and even open it for each of these. Just use the at sign. Once you put the at sign in your HTML, Laravel automatically knows that you're starting a PHP code there very very smart very very smart okay so this is what your users see as you can see it's basic html links uh if we go back to that laravel page that we created then this is the page you see laravel is bold here if we come here we're gonna see it you see laravel and um it's bold because they wrote the css directly here look at the css at the top of the file so they made this laravel bold that's what we're having here and then these links, documentation, whatever, whatever, uh, they are all here. Okay. So this, what your, this, uh, everything in views is what your users see. All right. So let's say a user clicks a link in view, or let's say the user clicks register, register link. Um, where is it? So let's say a user clicks register link. As you can see, the way the, the link, the hypertext is written is different because they're using, um, instead of write, writing ahref, then whatever, whatever, they just wrote ahref and used Laravel Blade Templating Engine to point to a certain route inside a routes file. So this is what I mean. Somebody clicks on a link here in your view and it points, we're going to point to a certain route. This route is where we write all the links. All the links that people will click here, internal links though, all the internal links people will click here that will go within Laravel, we're going to list all of them in a file here, all right? So they, they, each of the link will now know which function in our controller to talk to. So right here, somebody clicks on this, we're basically telling it, go to our routes file, check the register, the routes that we named register, then uh, use it and go to the controller and find the function that is called register. So let's see what is happening here. Somebody clicks register and it goes to route folder, goes to web.php and it finds this. All right. So now um, that register is built in, in built into Laravel. So you may not see it, but this is what it find. Uh, this is where it goes. Now this uh, route here, I will write for the routes so you understand better. But this route here basically hits the controller basically come here come to this place finds the appropriate controller you're talking about and goes to the appropriate function you're talking about and executes whatever is inside that function so that's how laravel works somebody clicks a link here immediately that link is uh, linked to uh the route it goes to route file scans through finds the the line that is that that um route is pointing to then from then it now knows where to go to in the controller and then from the controller, it finds the appropriate function that executes what's in that function. Maybe something in that function could be go to the database and um, get the list of users. So from then, it's going to go to the model. From model, it's going, it's going to go to the database, fetch list of users, pass through the model, get back to the controller, and um, 
follow whatever instruction that you wrote there. You understand? So that's simply how Laravel works. Sometimes you can skip the route file and just link directly to view. Let's say inside a function at the end of the day, you just wanted to uh, display a certain page, maybe an error page or maybe a redirect to whatever, and you don't want to use route. It's okay. You can just link it directly. That's why I put this line here. All right, so this is how it works in Laravel. Uh, you, know, you have to take care, uh, take uh, notice of the naming convention. As you can see, I named this payment. This starts with capital and stops here at singular. And then the, there must be controller in every controller file. So you have to do naming payment controller.php. So anytime you see the file, you already know it's a controller. When you come to model, it's still in singular, but there is no model or anything, extension. So all, all your model files will be the name in the database. Uh, but in singular and capitalized, which means it has to start with a capital letter. And these other ones are just like index.php, edit.php, whatever.blade.php. So once you see .blade, you should expect to see the majorly HTML, but with some CSS, with some, um, with some PHP, some funny kind of PHP. All right, I hope this whole thing made perfect sense. And uh, uh, what we're going to do is to create a login and registration with Laravel. It happens automatically, but we're going to create it. So the advice I normally have is when you have this, um, when you have this, your Laravel server running in a, uh, in a command prompt like this, always leave it. So create another command prompt and work with it while this one handles the running of your Laravel server. So um, I'll go here. Remember, right click, git, git bash. Then we are going to try and create Laravel with one command. You can create uh, user registrations, login, password verification, and whatever. Just one command, and it saves you a lot of a lot of headache. And that's exactly what I want to do now. I want to use just one command to create all those things to save myself a lot of headache. So to do that, you do PHP. I'm going to zoom so that you see what I'm doing. PHP artisan. Uh, make colon auth so once you do this and hit enter you don't need internet this will go into laravel and create user registration user login and um, a couple of other things for you so you see it has been generated successfully so the way you know that this um, has been generated successfully is if you come to this page as you can see this page is entirely blank up here if we refresh it now, it should come up with the registration and login uh, links with extra pages. So I'll show you some of the extra pages that it has already created. So um, look at it. It has finished refreshing. And um, one thing you have to know is that Laravel have a server, especially on Windows, is fond of sleeping. So um, initially what happened was that my, my uh, web page kept on rotating endlessly. So I pressed Ctrl C on my server and restarted it like I told you earlier. So now you see it has created two new links for us. We can click on login and um, it's going to show us the login page. So, but uh, let's see what's happening here. What are, uh, what other things that Laravel created? If we come to resources, views, we'll see that Laravel has created extra files. For instance, home.blade, it has created this file. It has created layout app.blade, see? And it has created auth now this auth folder inside view this auth folder contains some interesting files for instance the login.blade this is the page that contains logins it has written all this code for us it has written all this code for us this page contains login um this is form now you're 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 con you're conversant with html forms method post whatever remember the blade i talked about then email and so on and then uh, it has all this password and then the login and the remember me it just wrote all this code for us now what we're gonna look do is um, check here um, still trying to open so if your server sleeps just restart it so you see a very beautiful login page already same thing with the registration page it has created a registration page for us so that is what is happening this login page look at it here um, it was created here and if you can see it is inside this resources views auth it created this folder created a login registration password verification and so on 
and also this is a basic so after logging in uh, if your login was successful you'll be landed at home.blade all right now same thing with if we go to the routes web.php and check what has happened there you see that it has um, added uh, a group of routes called auth. This auth route contains several routes that is default to Laravel. Uh, you will understand later better, but it also um, added a specific route, the kind of thing I was trying to explain before with here. I said if somebody clicks a link, comes here, and then checks which function in the controller to um, trigger. That's exactly what's happening right here. So if somebody clicks a link, it comes a link that is named home, it comes uh, here in the route file searches, finds the link's name, and it goes straight to the controller. It says home controller, and this is the function, index function in home controller. That's what this means, index function in home controller. So if we go to, if we want to see this function or what is happening, then we have to go to app, go to remember, let me just. So we'll go to app folder, we'll go to HTTP, and we are looking for home controller see it has created home controller by default for us so see what is happening in home controller home controller has a function called index and the only thing that function is doing is it goes to the view file and displays a file named home.blade.php so it goes to that uh, uh, it goes to our view folder looks for a file named home.blade.php so if we come here in uh, resources views See view, view, then it's looking for home.blade.php. That's it. So this is the only instruction in this function. And what is in home.blade.php? Just hey, welcome or something. You are logged in. You see, that's the only thing there. So I hope this whole thing makes sense. And um, you kind of now understand how everything is connected together in Laravel. Um, now I've, I've taken my time to teach you very well all the basics, point out everything to you. So in the next video, We'll go straight to actually building the app we want to build, which is um, school management or online course management software, whatever. All right. So thank you very much. See you.